Well, hello, Mad Campers. Today we have a special little project for the little fashionistas in our lives. Yes, siri, we have a fabulous summer bucket hat designed for the little ones. It has a chin strap with a toggle. It has a very nice size brim and it can be turned up a little bit at the front if you wish. Just make sure that you check on these lines for the accuracy of your printer output. Uh, for the people with the A4, check your 10 centimeters. And for those of us with letter size, check the five inch line. We use a nice, soft, flat shoelace to make our cord for our hat. We use a little bit of elastic in the back of the lining for comfort and fit. And we use a nice poly cotton broadcloth for the lining. You can use any stabilizer that you have on hand for this project. I'm going to use a medium weight fusible on one hat and a sew-in heavy weight on the other. My anchors are quilting weight, so I'll use my heavy weight sew-in on this one and that will be my size large. The pattern link is in the description below. There'll be a little surprise for you, so read the description below to get your pattern. And to start out, I've cut my brim. I stacked it up in the layers that I need so that I can just cut from the cutting table to the sewing machine and all the cut edges are gonna match, but I'm gonna start by doing an edge stitch around the outside of my under brim, which is the denim. In this case, I'm sewing my heavyweight stabilizer to the wrong side of my denim under brim for my size large bucket. And once I've done that, I'm just gonna make a mark with my washable marker. I'm gonna make a mark about three inches or seven centimeters up from each edge. And that will be my starting and stopping point when I do my first seam to join the outside edges of my upper and lower brim pieces together. And for my small hat, I'm going to use the medium weight fusible one side stabilizer. This fabric's a little bit heavier than a quilting weight. Uh, so the medium weight's gonna be fine. And I've cut it again, stacking it in the, in the layers that I need. So I'm going to apply the heat on one side, turn it over and apply it to the other because when I cut, I put my interfacing with the glue side facing the wrong side of each piece of the brim. And I'm just going to put the right sides together now and just do a little bit of prep work to get ready for when I take it over to the sewing machine. Again, I'm going to make those marks for my stopping and starting. And for my band on my quilting fabric, again, I'm using the heavyweight sewing interfacing. I'm going to use some elastic in the lining five and a half inches or 14 centimeters. You can decide if you want it looser, make your elastic piece a little bit longer. You can also decide to just use the elastic to keep the hat on the head of the little one and just not bother with that chin strap and toggle too. And the off cut from the center of our brim works perfectly to make our top. And if you have two layers of that medium weight fusible one side interfacing. You'll only need one to back your top and we'll also do the large top with the sew-in interfacing as well. And we need two pieces of lining. So two top pieces, two pieces of lining with both have a curved center seam. I'm just applying that fuse now to the back of each piece for the top. And then I'll put the pieces right sides together and that curved edge is actually our center, our top center, and it's gonna pr produce a top that has a slight curve to it, just like our heads. Now over to the sewing machine, we'll get started sewing. And I start with that outside edge of our brim, right sides together, I leave that little three inches at the start and the three inches at the end open so that I can do this. And I am sewing the back seams together first before I finish closing my brim edge. And you'll see that I clipped away from where I'm gonna sew. That way I can leave my clips in and my seam width is three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. And that's what I refer to as my normal seam width. Uh, now I'm gonna finish closing that outside edge of my brim 
I've just opened up the back seam of my brim on the upper and the lower part of my brim and I'm sewing over top and leaving that uh, those seam edges open underneath and I just finished off the edge, cleaned it up with a serge and now I'm pulling it apart and opening it up all the way around as I get ready to roll that seam edge flat, bringing that joining seam right out to the very edge of the brim and clipping as I go all the way around to make a nice smooth curve in my brim edge. No jagged sewing for us, right folks? All the little raw edges are all cleaned up that way. You can clip with scissors to make rolling easier, but you're left with a beautiful nice edge of your seam all the way around when you roll it out like this. And now I'm just going to add a top stitch row and I'll do it about three, just a little bit um, less than three eighths of an inch, but a little bit more than a quarter. I'm just catching that uh, serge that's underneath my presser foot and I'm going to do the same with my anchors, my kid's large hat and I'll go around and I'll add a second row of top stitching. That's about the width of my presser foot away from that first row. So I have two rows of top stitching at the edge of my bucket hat and I can continue spacing out rows of top stitching all the way up to that inner edge of my brim. But instead I'm gonna stop at two and I'm gonna do an edge stitch to join that in, those inside layers together and add my Madcap Hats label. And my edge stitch is about a quarter of an inch from the edge of that inside curve or six millimeters. And the next step is to prepare the shoelace for our chin strap. I need to cut a notch for my chin strap placement. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut a center front notch on my brim, on that inside of the brim edge. And I'm gonna match up that center with the back seam and I'll clip it in place to hold it while I cut a little notch on either side and those side notches are going to be where we place our chin strap shoelaces and I attach the chin strap underneath on the underside of the brim and if you want you can pin them in place or put a clip there to hold them but we'll sew back and forth, back and forth and attach those pieces of shoelace to the underside of our brim on each side. So two pieces of shoelace, one on each side of the brim. And now I'll repeat for the small hat and I have a lovely soft pink for this one. And I'm just cutting my notches for my chin strap. And these shoelaces will be cut again. I will use those plastic uh, end pieces to help me put my toggle onto the shoelace, but I will take those plastic pieces off and tie the ends off in a knot so that the toggle doesn't come off of the chin strap. You can move it up and down, but it can't be just pulled right off. And I'll go back and forth, back and forth with an edge stitch just to hold those shoelaces in place and now I'm going to prepare my band and on my large hat I've just used the sew-in lining so like the underside of the brim I'm going to go all the way around and sew the sew-in heavyweight lining interfacing onto the back of my quilting cotton and I always like to work on the interfacing side when I do this so that the quilting cotton underneath does not stretch out of shape. A few pins help hold it in place too. And I'm just gonna add a double row of top stitching just to match the edge of my bucket hat. You can use something more decorative if you have a fancy stitch machine, but even just a couple of rows of top stitching just adds a little bit of extra, extra love to the hat. A little bit of extra detail never hurts and it's easy to do especially when you have a magnetic seam guide as your trusty friend so i'll just set that guide out to be about the width of the presser foot on that right side of my presser foot 
and I have a double stitch as my top stitch or as my decorative stitch I should say and also the edges of the back seam together right sides together and I'll finish that off by opening up the seam flat underneath and using a top stitch up one side down the other sewing that seam open and flat underneath and I'm just going to mark a center front for my band on both the top and the bottom and then I will mark the sides as well and this comes in very handy for doing the top but also when you do the um, side notches on the bottom of the band you can match it up with where your little chin strap cords are sewn on so right sides together we're going to start with the assembly of our hat and we've got the back seams matched and if you want to feel that you need to pin them together by all means go ahead and start pinning notches before you do this step and I'm using my regular seam width of 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter to sew the outside layer of my band onto the top layer of my brim so those are the two sides facing each other and it's starting to look like a cute little bucket hat and now for our lining and this is where the elastic comes in so we're going to sew our back seam of our of our lining together first and then we'll just do a single row of top stitching to hold that seam raw edge down flat on the wrong side just like that and then I'm going to use those notches that were in the, are on the band pattern for setting my elastic. And you may recognize those notches from the last video that we did, which was the adult version of this hat. It also had elastic in the lining and we used the notches in that pattern in exactly the same way, just to add some comfort and fit to the hat. And so I'm going to go up about two centimeters or three quarters of an inch from my edge and I set my magnetic seam guide to help. I'll start the elastic at one notch, the furthest away from me, and I'm working on the wrong side of the lining. And then I'll just pull it out and space it out as I go to the other notch and evenly space it, working it in as I go and sewing from one notch to the other with elastic underneath my presser foot. And my elastic is 1 8 of an inch wide or 3 millimeters. And I'll just remind you that there are links below in the description for things like elastic and these awesome shoelaces as well. And now we're going to sew right sides together, the right side of the lining facing the right side of the underside of our brim. And we'll match up those notches. and all the little cuts that we have as we go around. And I'm basically following the same line of sewing that I made when I sewed the outside of the band onto the outside or the top of the brim piece in that last step. And I'm just taking my time and matching notches as I go around and using my magnetic seam guide on the right there to line up all the raw edges against. And I will follow these exact same steps to make my little small rose kids bucket hat as well. And now I'll pull out my lining and pull out my band and match up at the top. I'm gonna close up the top now with an edge stitch. And I'm very pleased with myself that I didn't sew over my shoelace chin strap cord by accident. I made sure while I was sewing those uh, different steps that it was out of the way. And I'll just quickly go around the hat and sew the band pieces together at the top and just trim off anything that's extra. And we're making progress, folks. Our third and final hat piece is the top. And for the anchors, we are just going to do that edge stitch to attach our heavyweight sew-in interfacing or stabilizer on the wrong side. 
um, the print of our hat and the top is two pieces so we'll do it on both pieces and again my edge stitch is about a quarter inch from the edge of the fabric um, or six millimeters and once I have those two pieces with the heavyweight sew-in interfacing attached I'll just clip out of the way of my sewing and I'm going to sew down that center seam that is has, has a slight curve which is going to give us a top that has a slight curve to match the top of our head and I'm using my regular seam width of 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter and I'll do the same seam on my lining and I'm going to finish that seam by flattening it with a top stitch. So on the lining, I'll just top stitch on one side with the raw edges of both sides of the seam underneath my presser foot. And I'll pull it open as I go along. And I'm just using the width of my presser foot as my guide. And for the outside, I've picked a color of, of thread that'll match the top pretty closely so it won't be so noticeable. And I go up one side of the seam and back down the other with the seam open flat underneath. Now, if you have both kinds of interfacing, you could do the top with the fusible to make it a little bit lighter. And now I'm going to uh, sew the lining and the top together with an edge stitch and I'm going to do the wrong sides together. And I'll work from the outside layer, the, the layer that has my um, sewing interfacing underneath so it's nice and tough and strong with that heavyweight sewing interfacing sewn to the other side of that anchor print. It's nice and strong, it's not going anywhere, it's not stretching out of shape. And now my lining is attached. I bring the two ends of my center seam together. So one end is going to be the center front, one is the center back, and this allows me to create two center sides. So a notch on each side, and that's going to help me ease in the hat top to the hat band. And we're at the final stage, folks. We're almost there. So I've just clipped together the center front of the top to the center front of the hat band and now I'm working at the back matching up those seams and now to the sides and once I have the sides and those four clips in place I'll do a quick inspection to see that they fit fairly closely together we're looking for almost perfectly and if you see that one is much larger than the other, now is the time to make any adjustments. With the top, you can trim down towards that edge stitch to remove some of the volume. But I'll start at the back, and I'm using my magnetic seam guide a lot here, folks. I'm pushing the raw edges up against the magnet, and I'm trying to keep my seam depth at 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimeter, my regular seam width. And just taking my time and matching those notches and seams as I work my way around the hat and bringing the raw edges up together to rest beside that magnet. If you don't have a magnet, you can definitely clip and pin. Doing a neat job with this step is very important. You don't want a wonky top to finish off your beautiful hat. So try to keep that seam uh, width the same all the way around and then you can finish off with pinking shears or a serge like I have and I'll just smooth it out and check my work and I'm just going to do a top stitch now at the top of my band and I'm going to catch that seam, that, that top seam, the seam that I just did joining the top and the side of the band together and I'm just going to sew that seam down so that it's against the side of my hat on the inside of the hat and it just helps to add to the rounded shape of the top. So you can see I've moved the seam to the right or down into the band. And I'm just using my regular presser foot. I do have a presser foot that has a deeper side on that left side, but I'm just showing you can use a regular presser foot too. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my toggle. And I'm just using that plastic coating on the end of that shoelace to push one side through the toggle and then I push the other one through the hole in the toggle. And then I'm going to cut those plastic tips off and finish each end with a knot. So that little 
busy fingers can't pull that toggle right off the hat. If your little one doesn't need a tie and a toggle under the chin, then you can leave that part off. The elastic is going to give you some a nice fit for the hat. But even if you decide to sell these hats, the customer can always cut the tie and toggle off right up at the top of the seam. And there you have it. We have a lovely hat. And here's our little one. I love these shoelace packages because they have so many colors and that little pink shoelace works perfectly with this hat with the little pink flowers and the blue of course you can't go wrong and here we have our model for our small she's keeping it on her head but her mummy turned up the front a little bit better so she could see and our large size hat look at that it's gonna go swimming it's gonna stay out and have fun in the sun all day and it's so well made and pre-shrunk that it can go right into the wash at night Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. We're 6,000 subscribers strong. Thank you to our patrons and our channel members. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram if you like these free patterns. Think about a super thanks. Like and share our video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. My name is Tori Capes. I'm the designer of these hats and the owner of Madcap Hats. And I thank you so much for watching. Bye.